what a stupid name. Perhaps she's proud of herself for coming third. <laughs> Tip, Jonesy. I don't start. Well, you should have said that to Winnie. Five bucks down the drain. Yeah, well, I lost ten on the dog. Oh, my heart bleeds. Hey, go, Joe, go. Huh? Now there's a winner. Look, Joe, I've told you, you've got to look at the nags four. Read up on the jockey. You just can't pick one out of a hat. Why not? She's got just as much chance of winning. Now that hurt. Who invited you anyway? You need as I recall. You're going to show me how to win a packet. Yeah, well, I'm just getting warmed up. You know, I better get a move on. It's the last race and I only have the price of a drink. Yeah, well, I can fix that later. I'll buy you one. Hey, guys, check this out. Check the board, check the board, ladies and gentlemen. Top dollar, best odds. You can't go wrong with Maxi Stubbs. Have... Oh, yes, yeah, Um, Ten bucks the win on Go Joe Go, thanks. Look, I'd like to take your money and chuckle all the way to the bank. But I'm going to do you a favour. Point you to number two. Good chance, good odds. Uh, no, I'm sticking to Go Joe Go. Is it fives? No. <laughs> all right, your money, sweetheart. <laughs> Here we go. Six twenty to one to win. There we go. I'll put five bucks on number two. Take along there, sweetheart. Betting's Number supposed to be two. about following your heart. Yeah, and this go. one's straight from the horse's mouth. Come on, anyone else? Can't go wrong with an inside bet. You two are so boring sometimes. I can't believe Crawl actually won. <laughs> How you did I win? <laughs> oh, it's hard to say because we were stuck here waiting for you. Oh. And the sound system gave out five lengths from the finish post. Sorry, I had to queue. There's two port and 500 women here. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, you didn't have to wait. No, oh, he insisted. He's the gentleman. Well, having another beer, more like it. Yeah. Oh, what sorry, we sorry. Mate? Settle down, mate. Can't upset a lady on Ladies' Day. A champagne for my friend here, double vodka for me. Sorry, sir, bar's closed now. Oh, come on, mate. I'm just trying to celebrate. You must have some there somewhere. Not worth my job, sir. <laughs> Jesus, you get a win and you can't even get a drink. Uh, excuse me, sir. You, you don't happen to know who won the last race? Yeah, sure do. Great little mare. Number six. Go, Joe, go. Yes! <laughs> oh, an excellent day's work. 180 bucks just for following my instincts. Yeah, yeah. That puts me 150 in front. And me 40 down. Mm. I don't know how I managed it, but I seem to have broken even. I can't really believe it till I got my hands on that lovely cash, though. Well, if you hadn't have been sharing your liquid with your 500 mates, we wouldn't have missed the bookie. Don't rain on my parade, James. Hey, call that bookie first thing in the morning. I will call him dead on 9 o'clock. I'm fine. Help me! Help! Mate, what happened? Oh. Hey. Oh. Call, call the cops. I've been robbed. You got bashed and robbed in a race course car park and no one saw anything. Well, they weren't out in the open. Whoever did it was waiting for him in his car. No one saw anything? Well, most people left by then. You've got nobody right to do that. I'm the one that puts myself on the line, not you. Oh, that's crap, Maxie. And you're not going to get away with it. You follow me around, love. Uh, we all met today. At the all right. Mr. Stubbs, I'm Senior Detective Hash, and this is Constable Parrish. We just want to have a chat to you about what happened today. Yeah, well, I'll uh, leave you to it. I'll call you when I'm feeling more jibber. Don't worry about it, Maxie. I'll be in to see you first thing tomorrow. You'll have to excuse my mate. Gets a bit overexcited. Nice mate, picking a fight with you now. As I said, he gets overexcited. So, what can you tell us about today? <sighs> Nothing. I was getting in my car, and some bloody coward whacked me from behind. I can get my hands on him. How much money did you get? 22, give or take. 22,000. What was your mate's name? Ian. Surname? Middleton. Sounded pretty angry with you. He's my mate. He wouldn't do me. Do you know a guy called Ian Middleton, boss? Local horse trainer. Yeah, he used to be a bit of a wild man when he was younger. He used to get into plenty of fights, as I remember. He's having a blue with stubs at the hospital. He could have cut the tension with a knife. You forgot this. Thank you. Grandfather told me that real men drink beer. Very funny. He's only abstaining so he can lash out the rotary dinner on Friday. I don't need an excuse for responsible drinking. Should be a good deal. Yeah, it usually is. Uh, can I get a couple of beers, thanks, Chris? Yeah. How'd you go at the uh, race trip? Uh, crime scene haven't turned up anything yet. Yeah, they're packing up for the night, so we can't do much till the morning. But we've got two reports of a light-coloured four-wheel drive leaving the car park at a lick. Better than nothing, I suppose. So beers on you, Jack? I just bought around. We just want to share in your success. My bookie got robbed, didn't you hear? Light-coloured four-wheel drive. Bit early for house calls. 
Oh, just looking into the assault of your friend. Got nothing to do with me. <laughs> no one's saying it has. I was just wondering if you'd have any idea who might want to do that to Mr Stubbs. Some young person looking for easy money, I don't know. Well, you two were having a bit of a blue last night, though, weren't you? He owes me money. What, do you reckon I'd roll my own mate? I was a bit full, that's all. Got carried away. Is this your car? Yeah. Used to be my wife's before she took off. Nice place you got here. Mind if I take a look around? Suit yourself. I've got work to do. Put your back into it, Tim. You're not a bloody hairdresser. No, I was here all day. Got a problem with one of the yearlings. Had to wait around for the vet. Is this Gojo Go? Oh, that's her over there with young Tim. Come on! Keep tickling her like that, she'll die laughing. Kevin, didn't I tell you to bring up that grave from the back paddock and put her in the holding yard? Well, the stalls are empty. The business isn't so hot at the moment. What are you talking about? You had a winner yesterday. It'll be the first this year. Well, the owners have pulled their horses out. They don't have confidence in us anymore. Boss not putting in the work, eh? The only thing he's been working since his wife left him is his left elbow. Any work gets done around here, including training, gets done by me. Been here long? A couple of months now. Are you from Mount Thomas? No, from Queensland. I bought with Mr. Middleton. He's the one that hands out the apprenticeships, is he? He knows I can ride. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. He just signed through on as an apprentice jockey. What happened there? Fell off a track work. You gotta get moving, Tim. I'll finish for now. You gotta shift that feed. Oi, you two. Don't get paid to stand around jabbering. Sorry, Mr. Billings. Anything else? Oh, that's it, thanks. Right. I've got work to do. Falling in love again, eh? Ben Billings reckons that Middleton drinks like a fish and the owners have lost confidence in him. Yeah, well, he's plastered yesterday at the races. Oh, looks like someone's left us a note. When he's asleep, I'll get him, I'll get my knife, and I'll grab him by the throat, and I'll get him dead. He's lying in his own blood, and I'm running so fast, it's like I'm flying, and he's dead, and now I'm free. We were at, that's pretty close to the edge. Exactly. I mean, we could be looking at something really serious here. And you think it's somebody who works at Middleton's? Well, it looks like it. I mean, maybe Mr Middleton's laying into one of his juniors. Well, that fits with what I just found on Leap. Well, he's got form. Two minus from about five years ago. Disturbing the peace. Bad punch-ups. Hey, Joe. Stick your social conscience in your drawer and come with me. Where are we going? Oh, i talked to a few colourful racing identities. Okay. Hey, Grace. Oh. OK, see you then. Bye. Hello, how are you? Oh, having a running battle with my church wardens about our music policy, but look, apart from that, I'm just fine. Um, uh, can I have a quick word with you, please? Yeah, come on in. A careers talk? Yeah, it's to the church youth group. I, I thought you might be able to offer some insight into the police force as a possible career opportunity. Uh, oh, yeah, I'd be delighted to. Well, um, it depends what night it is. You don't have to do this if you don't want no, to. No, I'd love to help if I can. Well, it's just that I had a, a, a lawyer who cancelled on me at it's actually today. Today? Mm. Yeah, and I'm just a fill-in. No, no, look, oh, no, it's so long. <laughs> look, I would have asked you next anyway, really. Oh. Yeah, well, look, you know, today's fine. Yeah, that's good. Uh, as long as it wasn't tomorrow night, because... Well, it's the Rotary Dinner tomorrow night. And, oh, right. uh, It's quite a big do here. The Rotary Dinner. Yeah. Oh, good. So there's no clash or anything? No, no, no. no. Oh, great. great. All right. Well, so I'll see you in the humanities room uh, after school. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today's fine. It's... Uh, I, I do quite a bit for the Rotary. That's, and, uh, that's great. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, and I, uh, <laughs> need to be there. Uh, can you remember what it is that uh, motivated you to join the force? Oh, look, I'm giving a careers talk after school this afternoon and I just wanted a more youthful perspective. That's OK, all. OK. Well, uh, the usual things, righting wrongs, fixing the world, yeah. love of paperwork. Wearing leather and carrying a gun. <laughs> Thanks for that contribution, Jones. I'm sure the children of Mount Thomas would be most impressed by that. 
How'd you go? Oh, I had a chat to some of the punters. It seems that Max is not averse to taking the odd dollar under the table. Nothing the stewards ever managed to pin on him, but he's not the straightest bookie around. And the general consensus that Middleton as a trainer sucks. Have you gone on to the chief steward yet? Next thing we're going to do. Uh, maybe we should go to the stables first. And that would be because? Well, it wouldn't hurt, would it? I mean, if Middleton's abusing his staff, it makes him look more likely for attacking Mr. Stubbs. She's right. Could be useful. I don't recognise the writing. It's not mine. It's terrible that someone feels that bad. So you've got no idea who wrote it? There's only me and Tim here, apart from Kevin, and he's been here forever. The others got laid off about a month ago. It does look like kids writing like it might be Tim's. Look, nobody's laying into us. I mean, he works as hard, but you expect that. Hey, is that Clint Billings or Mr. Middleton? Both of them. Look, I've got stuff to do. So, no one's giving you a hard time? I told you, didn't I? I wish I could help you, but I can't. Yeah, I know, if they don't want your help. She's not telling us everything. PJ. Yeah, mate. Got a bit of news for you. Did you know the Victorian Racing Club investigated Ian Middleton's affairs about five years ago? The stewards reckoned that he was in cahoots with a bookie. Now, they'd lie about a horse's form. That'd discourage other people from betting on it, and that'd lengthen the odds. So they'd bet on it themselves, and they'd score big. So how come he's still training? Nothing was proven. But it turns out the same bookie later had a nasty accident. What sort of accident? What sort of accident that ends you up in hospital with a fractured skull? Didn't Maxie Stubbs try to put you off betting on Go Joe Go? Okay, we're going to need to get wines to access Middleton's TAB and bank records. Uh, Benny, I'm going to need to have a chat to the chief steward. Okay. All right, what can I do? Uh, crime scene will still be out of the car park, mate. Uh, want to see if you can lend a hand? Yeah. Joe, are you with me? I just want to ask you a few more questions about your relationship with Middleton. Nothing to tell. He's got a hell of a temper. Did he ever hit you? <laughs> As if. Now, Max, I'm going to be talking to Stuart to Sarva. Am I going to find out that you've been encouraging punters off a good horse? I mean, the odds are long enough you could make a stack of money for yourself. If I did that, detective, I'd lose my job. Nah, you could have got a mate or a missus and make the odd bed for you. I love my job. It's my whole life. Well, sometimes a gambler can't help himself. I think I'd last in the game this long if I'd been greedy and stupid. Look, there's nothing between me and Middleton you can stick your finger at. So I suggest you quit while you're ahead. You remembered anything about who attacked you yet? Not a thing. Because we heard a story about Mr. Middleton, that he was involved with the bookie a few years back. And the bookie got beaten up, got his skull smashed in. Where, where'd you hear that? Oh, around. They were never able to pin it on him, but... Uh, he wouldn't do something like that. He's my mate. I think Stubbs has a close relationship with the truth. Oh, I think they have the odd falling out. Mount number is 900, mount number is 208. 208. PJ, a crime scene located at the tyre lever near the car park at the track. Judging by the hair and blood on it, it was what was used to hit Mr. Stubbs. Any suggestion of the kind of tyre the tyre lever could lever if it could lever tyres? <laughs> Uh, changing a tyre without a tyre lever, isn't it? Let me ask you a question. You come knocking on my door and asking about a tyre lever. I say, look for yourself. Did you have any problem doing that? I never locked the car. Anyone could have taken that lever. Locked the house? No, the staff are in and out every day. They use the kitchen and the bath. Shouldn't you have a warrant? Well, we can get one. Oh, yeah, that'd be right. You blokes can do anything you like, can't you? What are you looking for, exactly? 22 grand. You might as well brand me as a thief. I'd calm down if I was you, Mr. Middleton. What's going on? Um, we're hoping Mr. Middleton can help us with our inquiries. You think he's got something to do with what happened to Mr. Stubbs? We don't know. We've got to explore all the possibilities. You don't need to look here. This is my room. I'm sorry. We won't be long. Is that your mum? Yeah. 
That was taken a few years ago before my dad shot through. Oh, I bet she misses you. If you want, I can go take you out to see the new foals in the top paddock. Oh, yeah? Oh, that sounds good. Just, um... Give me... That's private. Tim. Did you leave the piece of paper for me to say? Someone put it on our car when we were here earlier. What are you talking about? It's the same handwriting. Tim, I can help you, but you really need to tell me what's going on. If I want your help, I'll... Yeah, I really should keep these. What for? Reckon I'm hiding the goodies in here, do you? Tim? You're Tim. a bloody wild goose chase here, love. You're wasting your time. There's only me and Kevin here, and I got five boxes to muck out. It's a tough life working with horses, eh? I manage. Who's bullying Tim? Nobody. How do you hurt his wrist? That kind of stuff happens when you work with horses. One gets cranky and it kicks you. Is that what happened? Yeah, he was grooming a mare and she kicked him. So how come Tim told me he fell off during track work? I don't know. Maybe he felt stupid. How'd you get the bruises on your arm? Oh, um, I got it jammed in a gate. Chief Stewart said he can't see all tomorrow morning, mate. Oh, fabulous. I love it when everything runs like clockwork. Did you get anything on Middleton? No, but it seems Tim wrote our note. What did he say? Well, it's a problem. He's not saying anything. What's he doing hanging around at Middleton's if he's getting beaten up? He wants to be a jockey. He thinks if he hangs in there long enough, he'll get an apprenticeship. Sounds like he needs a wake-up call. Meaning? Well, either he learns to stand up for himself or get out. And we do nothing. We can let him know that we're here to help when he's ready to acknowledge there's a problem. But Joe and... So Sam Middleton is... just gets away with it? No, that's not what I'm saying. Hey, we're on a robbery investigation, remember? In which Ian Middleton is the prime suspect, remember? Yes. So why don't we get him in here on another matter? It gives you a chance this to other matter. Him out of it. It has nothing to do with the alleged abuse of one of his staff members. Well, mine. Why don't we get Tim in for a chat, too? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, Tim Reed has a broken wrist and your apprentice, Prue, has bruises on her arm. Look, I don't go around hitting the stable hands. What about when you've been drinking? I don't get violent when I drink. I usually go to sleep. Changed, have you? You were getting into fights five years ago. A bit of a temper, do we? Sometimes, but I don't hit kids. All right, so why did you lose your temper with Maxie Stubbs last night? None of your business. Well, you should have been happy. I mean, your mayor won a race yesterday. Look, I know what you're thinking about me and Maxie Stubbs, but you're barking up the wrong tree. Right. Is there anything you need to tell us? Yes. I don't hit kids, and I didn't hit Maxie Stubbs. Clear? You talk to Mr. Middleton? It's OK. If it comes back on you, we'll deal with it. I, I miss home, you know. I write stuff down to get stuff out of my system. It doesn't mean anything. We can help you, Tim. You don't have to put up with this. I told you, I don't want your help. You had no right to go into my room. What about Prue? If it's happening to her too, don't you think it's time someone did something? She can look after herself. Have you seen the bruises on her arm? It's time to blow the whistle, Tim. It's, it's not happening to her, to anybody. Right, so you're prepared to sit around and wait while someone else gets badly hurt. You don't understand. It's not like that. It's up to you to act. The first thing you need to do is get yourself out of there. No job is worth being treated like a punching bag. I told you, nothing's happening. Bullying the kid isn't going to get us anywhere. Oh, and Softly Softly's catching this monkey, is it? He's scared. Yeah, which is why we need to shake him out of it. Then we can help him. He's just a kid. A kid in trouble, Joe. Nothing's going to change until he realises he's got the power to walk away. You've got no idea how to treat a situation like this. I'm off to tell the children of Mount Thomas about the joys of policing. Any last-minute tips you'd like to throw my no, way? No, not really. All oh, right. Anything I can help you with? Well, I'll be off then. I'll give Tim a lift home.
What's so he's going to take him back to the place and dump him, eh? Joe, if you asked him what he wanted, which you haven't, he'd say he wants to go home. And if he wants to go there, then that's his business. Fine. Have it your way. I had no idea you were such a fine speaker, Tom. <laughs> Well, I, I did seem to enjoy it, didn't I? The number of questions I asked afterwards is anything to go by. They sure did. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> Even at such short notice. Oh. oh. No, it was really good to get my public speaking engine ticking over, actually. I, I've got to make another small speech tomorrow night. Oh, yeah? Mm, yeah, at the Rotary dinner. Oh, well, I'd better let you go and prepare then. No, no, that's all right. I, uh, I know what I'm going to say, loosely. I, I like to try and leave it a bit off the cuff, you oh, know. Oh, that's probably a good idea. Since, uh... Short notice seems to be the order of the day. I was, uh, I was wondering if you might like to come to the dinner. To the Rotary dinner. Hmm. I mean, I know it's a bit late to be asked. No, Tom, I'd, I'd love to. Thank you. Good. So, what do you think? Oh yeah, it's really nice, Chris. It's really nice. You don't think it's too over the top? Well, it depends on what you've got in mind. The Rotary Dinner. Hasn't Tom been driving you mad practising his speech? Uh, no. Oh, he has every other year. Anyway, what do you reckon? Dine and dance? Chris, it, it's so nice. Nice. You see, that's why there are no male fashion writers. These shoes cost me an arm and a leg. Well, you'll only need one of them, then. Oh, Jones, can I get you a drink? Please. I'll charge you a scotch if I can find the bar, mate. Chris! You're still thinking about him, aren't you? God knows how he coped last night, stuck in that house with Middleton. Well, you did your best. I'm not fixing anything, am I? You just got to wait for him to come around. Got in the job to help people, not stand back and watch them suffer. On Joe, it's Middleton. What's wrong? Hey, Daryl. Hey, Jay. Moved. He's breathing, but he hasn't moved. And I had to go inside to call the ambulance. I didn't want to leave him. Where is everyone? Um, oh, Kevin and Mr. Billings are still on the track. Where's Tim? Oh, I don't know. His bed hasn't been slept in. No, I don't think he came home last night. Thanks, Sergeant. Yeah, there's a fax going through at the moment. No sightings? Not yet. We've got okay, Tim's thanks. picture out. Maybe she'd a general alert. Uh, his mum comes from Western Queensland. Just been on the phone to Sergeant Peters from up there. They're going to send a unit around to see you. Yeah, and they're keeping an eye on the roads and train stations. Well, if he is hitching, we'll have a little chance of a sighting. Tim's not the only one with a grudge against Dan Middleton, you know. He's the only one fantasising about killing him. Well, what about Clint Billings or Maxie Stubbs? I mean, they've both got problems with him. Well, we're going to talk to all of them and Prue while we wait for Tim to turn up. Have we got anything from the hospital? Uh, no, not yet. Um... Except that Middleton was bashed last night, hours before Prudence Day found him. Yeah, but he's going to be OK, right? Well, it's a pretty bad way, who knows? Little bugger finally snapped, eh? Which little bugger would that be? Young Tim. Hi. Uh, okay. Yes, just come straight through here, thanks. It's only a matter of time. Sorry? Well, he finally got sick of Middleton chewing his ear, yelling at him all the time. You don't seem to like Tim much. Well, it doesn't matter what I think of him. I, mean, I don't have to like him. Like doesn't get the work done. You were getting pretty fed up with him, though, weren't you? No more than usual. Well, maybe you wanted to take over the business yourself. Well, if I wanted to do that, I'd go out on my own. I've got a good name. Owners are ready to back me. So what's stopping him? Just waiting for the right time. What do you think happened? I reckon he yelled one time too many at the kid. The kid spat the dummy. Had to happen sooner or later. Brew, if you know anything, now's the time to talk. It wasn't Tim. I know it wasn't. How do you know? I just do. He's not like that. Do you think Ian Middleton was physically abusing him? No. How well do you know Tim? Well enough. I look out for him. Did you leave that piece of paper out for us to find? No. Who do you think did? I don't know. Do you think it was Tim trying to get our attention, maybe? Have you spoken to that bookie guy? What? Max. What, what's his name? He was at the house last night with Mr Middleton. 
Yes, I went to see him to get my money back. I thought you said he didn't do it. Yeah, but when you think about it, it makes sense, doesn't it? What happened? You were falling out about the split? What time did you see him last night? Oh, about eight-ish. What do they do? <laughs> Nothing. He was full of ink and in a nasty mood. He threatened you? He said he'd introduce my teeth to my backside via my throat. I wasn't going to hang around and let him thump me. So what happened? I left. One trip to the hospital's enough for me. But you just walked away even though you think he bashed and robbed you? I'm a survivor, love. I know when to get out. Didn't push him around a little bit first? No. Ask the lad who works for him. Tim Reed? Yeah, he was there. Tim's had a hard time, but that doesn't make him incapable of committing a crime. If we'd taken what was happening to him more seriously, maybe we could have avoided so this. So we got Middleton in. We questioned him about the violence. Maybe he took it out on Tim. Sarge, we've picked up Tim. He was hitching, heading north. It's not too late to get all this sorted out, Tim. Talk to us. You're going to have to help us out here, mate. Why? Well, things aren't looking too good. I mean, your, your boss is in hospital. You're found hightailing at home. I was missing my mum, that's all. I didn't see anything last night. I don't know anything. Look, maybe it was an accident, a mistake. Mr. Middleton took a swing at you and you reacted. Look, help us and we can help you. I told you, I wanted you to leave me alone. If you hadn't stuck your nose in, none of this would have happened. Hi. Are you available? Sure is. How are you, Chrissy? Good. How are you? You look great. It's not your fault any of this has happened. That's not what you were saying before. That, that's not how I meant it. Sometimes kids just need a, a wake-up call to see what they can do for themselves. I was trying to get through to him, trying to help him, you know? Exactly what I would have done. And it's when diverse organisations like local government, schools, Red Cross, the police and Rotary come together that makes communities like ours so special. What do you reckon? I reckon it's going to be even better than last year's, you know. Really? Yeah. Uh, can I get you a cup or anything? Oh, no thanks. I'm here for information. Information? Yeah, like what time are you heading off? Heading off where? To the Rotary do. Oh, I've, uh, I've asked Grace Curtis to the dinner. Oh. Oh. Oh, I thought... Um... I'm sorry, I... Oh, no, that's fine. Sometimes having a memory like an well... elephant with her has its drawbacks. Um, you know, like last year you said, um, we must do it again this year. Oh, did I? Yeah, but look, that, that's, that's fine. Uh, why would you remember? Um, hope you have a great night. Uh, Chris. Can you just hold for a sec? Thanks. Chris. Uh, boss. What? You got the hospital on the phone? What, news on Middleton. Is he okay? No, afraid not. No, he's just died. It's time to talk, Tim. Time to get everything out into the open. <laughs> Mr. Stubbs says you were there. He saw you come back to the house. He came here for dinner. Did you have a fight with Mr. Middleton? No. He was drunk. Was he pushing you around? Tim, did you have a fight with him? I've got nothing to say. Just make it easy on yourself and just tell us everything you know. I killed him. I killed him. It was me. Mr. Billings told me that the boss wanted to see me. Okay. So when was this? When he got back from seeing you guys. I figured that he wanted to talk to me about the trouble I'd been having. The abuse? I was scared he would sack me. I took off down the paddock and sat there for ages. It was dark by the time I came back up to the house. Mr. Middleton found me in my room. He was pretty drunk. He wanted to know who'd been laying into me. He said that you guys thought it was him. 
And then I was getting him into trouble. Stuff like that. What did you tell him? I tried to talk to him, but he didn't listen. He got angry and he started shouting. He said he was going to shake some real sense into me. He attacked you? No. He just came after me. He grabbed me and... I pushed him. I pushed him really hard. I had to. I had to, to get him off me. Okay, Tim, now, um, where did this happen, please? On the veranda. He, he fell backwards and he stopped yelling. What happened then? I, I ran around to my room to get my things in. I took off for home. You said he wanted to know who'd been beating you. So who was doing it? Clint Billings. Well, he's lying because he doesn't like me. He'll never make a good jockey. I told him that and he didn't like it. You didn't break his wrist? I never touched him. I never hurt Tim, did I? Come on, tell them. Has it gone far enough now, Prue? He broke his wrist. And he told me that he would get Mr. Middleton to fire me if I said anything. You want to make a statement about that? It's your word against mine. He just did it because he could. He'd get off on it. A couple of whiskeys and he'd get really angry. He said he'd dismiss me if I said anything. But Clint Billings wasn't in a position to fire you. It was Mr. Middleton who was the boss. Clint was running the place. He made all the important decisions. Prue, well, why didn't you speak up? Because I didn't want to lose my job. In this game, you have to be tougher than the boys. And you have to stay out of trouble. It was you who put the note from Tim's diary on that car, wasn't it? I should have said something. Stuck up for Tim. Mr. Middleton was difficult. He didn't deserve to die. Who do you think attacked him? Clint Billings. Prue Day needs to make up her mind. She was pointing the finger at Maxie Stubbs earlier, and now she's saying Clint Billings is responsible. We can't take her word at face value. Well, I don't think we can take the confession of a frightened kid at face value either. Yeah, okay, Joe. We'll, we'll just wait for forensics to get back to us, okay? We should be talking to Clint Parish. Billings. Let's just wait and see what they turn up, okay? So, boss, Chris tells me you wow them all with your speeches at the Rotary dinner. I do my best. Yeah. You should see the outfit she's got. We're not going to this dinner together, Jones. Not that it's any of your business. Crime scene photos are here. Ah. What's the word from forensics? Uh, Middleton was killed by being struck on the back of her head with a blunt object. That doesn't match Tim's story. No. Oh. But forensics have come up with something that will interest you. Hmm? Analysis on the spillage of the table. Hmm? It's all whiskey. Middleton was a vodka drinker. It was Clint Billings who drank whiskey. Exactly as Prue said, right? He has a couple of whiskeys and he gets a bit nasty. Wasn't that where Middleton hung up that branding iron? I hope you're going to tidy this up. It's a search warrant, mate, not a cleaning contract. What are you doing? You're like a scotch for a nightcap, do you? So what? I'll see if this glass matches the stain we found at the scene. But the indentation should help too. I'll need a key for this, mate. Oh, I don't have one. Yeah, right. Key? We can break it open if we have to. Okay. Well, if you hang around crooks long enough. Mm. 
And buy yourself a stud farm. It wouldn't come cheap. Where are you going to get the deposit from? Investors? Crap, Clint. You stole the money from Maxie Stubbs and you tried to put your boss in the frame. Nut. You used Mr Middleton's car, you used his tyre lever. Well, then it sounds like he did it, doesn't it? And when Middleton found out you were beating up his kids, he had a go at you and you killed him. No. We can prove you're at the scene. We found your whiskey glass. You're going to have to come up with something better than that. Oh, we will. We'll make sure of that. New Zealand, huh? Yeah, there's heaps of good trainers there. And there's miles from here. Oh, I hope it all works out for you. Thanks. I feel bad about Tim, though. But like I said, it's tough enough watching out for yourself. Oh, I don't know. I reckon you managed to look out for yourself and Tim. Uh, Clint Billings, uh, does he have any close mates, anyone he really trusts? Um, he had a girlfriend. They went drinking a lot together. Sue. Something. I think Kev knows her name. Oh. Hey, hey, good luck. Thank you. I just had a word to Kev. Mm -hmm. Just told him that he saw Billings chuck something in the creek this morning. You, uh... I should have tossed it last night, Clint, when there's no one else around. Oh, there's one other little thing. Uh, 20,000 little things, actually. Shouldn't have trusted your girlfriend with it, mate. Ah, uh, two grand's gone for a walk. A little cow. So what do you know? Okay, I put it to you that Ian Middleton chased Tim Reed. Tim pushed him over. And then you came along a bit later, had another argument with him. Put your glass down on the table. Picked up this branding iron and belted him over the back of the head with it. Then you really panicked, right? Sure, you like hurting people. But this time it's gone too far, hasn't it? I worked my ass off for him. What did I have to show for it? He pissed away any winnings, he pushed me around. Oh, this stupid bastard couldn't get a good run out of Farlap. So he deserved to die, did he? He was a bloody loser! And you just joined the club. You still want to ride? Yeah, but no one will give me a job. What, so you're just going to give up? I just don't think I've got what it takes. Reckon you'll uh, let that sort of thing happen to you again? I, I don't know. I guess I'll see you coming next time. Good. I uh, had a chat to a trainer a bit earlier. Lizzie Green over at Evanley. You know her? Yeah, she's great. She's interested in having a talk to you. Here's a number. Thanks. <laughs> Who are you looking so happy about? I was just going to chat to Tim. And? Oh, well, I wanted to chat to the um, stewards earlier. Mm -hmm. And apparently Maxie had aid to spread the word that uh, Gojo Go was carrying an injury. What a hell of a race for an injured horse. Mm. Take a look at the boss. Chris, have you got a minute? Uh, no, not really. Well, it won't take long, and it is important. Look, um... Sometimes we take things for granted. Oh, Tom, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to take that dinner for granted. No, I'm talking about me. I've been taking our friendship for granted, and, and that, that's very thoughtless, and I, I apologise. Oh, look, you've got nothing to apologise for. Why would you remember a remark you made a year ago? Well, you did. Yeah, so what does that make me? Brilliant or desperate? <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. There's nothing to be sorry for. I hope you have a lovely time, really. You know, I, I suppose I took our friendship for granted, too. I'll make it up to you. I suppose, um... I suppose, you know, it just hurts a bit, that's all. We've always... We've always been such great mates and, um... Well, we still are, and, aren't we? And I... I guess I thought that at, at... Someday, you know, in the back of my mind, I thought that, um... We'd be more than friends. Yeah. 
You know how much you mean to me. I'd never do anything to hurt our friendship, you know that. I know that. You're gonna be late. Have a lovely time. Should eat better. Now, these are good takeaways. They're healthy. You want some? Not hungry. Come on. Beef musselman, satay chicken. Beats all that designer food they're serving at the Rotary dinner. Come on. Sounds good. <laughs> 